Good morning. Good morning to those of you online. Let me say, let me say thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you again to our amazing kids team. Thank you, band. Hey, where is Princess? Princess! Great job, lady. Great job leading today. Jesus, heaven looks at you and smiles on that voice, stepping out here. I just feel like God wanted me to tell you today. I, it, it just it wouldn't leave me like, you are anointed, you are called, you are made for this. You are part of this team. God has you. You just keep stepping out. Sometimes you'll feel like, oh, shoot. Is it me? Should I do this? Like, oh no. But God has you. He's the one who's called you. So he's going to give you every single thing that you need to live well when this stage is given to you. Trust your team, everyone behind you. We love you. God's got you. Lead on, girlfriend. Lead on. Lead on. So great to see her leading this morning. It is back to school bash. What a great week that we are having. It's going to be a super fun Sunday in church. Thank you. Pastor Jeff and Sunny are away this week getting in one more little trip with their boys before sending both of them off to college uh, this year. So a big time for their family. So pray over them just for rest and relaxation and all those great family uh, moments that they're going to get to have this week. And um, let me just dive in and say I'm so excited about preaching this morning. I feel like I have a little something going on in my belly in a good way because I feel like God has something that he wants us to take out of this place today. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, all right, back to school week. A lot of you parents I know kind of slid in today with your cups of coffee. You've made it through the orientations. You fought the, um, the crazy school supply lines at Walmart to get everything ready. You got your buses organized, all the things kind of organized. Are these my earrings bothering? It's happening, Sanjay? Yep. Uh, Sorry, guys. I really was fighting for the jewelry. Okay, there we go. Let's get rid of those for you so you won't be thumping around there. Okay, all of our buses rolled this week. Got, got a lot of those kids off. I know a lot of you have kids going to school this week. Tomorrow, a lot more starting. But hey, Sticks and Stones Will Break My Bones is the title of our sermon series this month. And a lot of you know, lessons, you know the little playground adage, so say it with me. Sticks and stones will break my bones, but words will never hurt me. I don't know who came up with that, right? But what a bunch of malarkey. Absolutely not true. Not true. Our words have power. Our words absolutely can hurt. We say in the office all the time that words create world, worlds. My words, your words, what we believe, how we internalize that, how we use those words associated with our actions, our reasoning, our identity, our worldview, okay? All of those words are absolutely important and they can help or hurt us. They can help or hurt your kids as you launch them into the school year. They can help or hurt us every single day as we walk into our jobs, our play dates, whatever it is that we are walking into this week. Pastor Jeff reminded us last week that we not only need to be aware of the words that we speak but we also need to be aware of how that we, that we are cultivating proper thinking regarding our words about God right. and about ourselves. He reminded us that God is omnipotent. He's all-powerful. He's omniscient. He's all-knowing, and he is good. He is good. Therefore, we should be thinking these things when we think about him and when we think about ourselves. I can't protect you from every word that will be spoken to you. Parents, we can't protect our kids this year from every word that will spoke, be spoken to them. But today, what I can do is encourage you and help you to understand why it is so important for us to 
uh, to embrace proper doctrine, proper biblical truths, so that we walk in such confidence about who we are and who God has made us that those words, when thrown at us or spoke to us unjustly, will roll off our backs because that is the life that God has for us. As our students return um, this academic year, like they're all getting on the buses, doing all the things, we would absolutely argue that it is important for them to have intentional practice in their academics, their crafts, maybe their sports, their arts, correct? Every one of us would argue that, hey, we got to get back in the practice of things. You know, a lot of you know that um, Eric and I have two daughters. We have Mariella, who is 18. She'll be starting college this year. And then we have Catherine, who is 15, who is starting her first year, her freshman year of high school. She kicked off at Mill Creek this Wednesday. Now, Catherine, the 15-year-old Nye, if you happen to know her, you know, she's a little bit sassy, that one. But the 15-year-old Nye have been, let's just say we've been negotiating terms over the last few weeks. See, Mariella, when she started ninth grade, back about four, I guess, four years ago, when she started a high school, she did not know what God was calling her to. She had no idea, as most don't. But she was kind of in this mindset of, I'm going to get everything that I possibly need from school so that when I get to my senior year, I have lots of choices. So she did the AP classes. She did dual enrollment. She was like, give me everything that I can possibly get so that I'll be ready for whatever I decide I want. Catherine, however, the 15-year-old sassy one, If you haven't heard the joke uh, around here, Catherine looked at Pastor Joe a few years ago when she was only still early kind of middle school and looked at Pastor Joe and Joe was just teasing, just talking with her one day and said, Catherine, what do you think you want to do? And she looks at Pastor Joe and she goes, well, Pastor Joe, I want your job. (laughs) And believe it or not, she really has kind of meant it. She believes that there's a voice, there's a song in her heart that she, she wants to be a worship leader. She wants to be a worship pastor one day. And so she's also figured out that she can go to Highlands College in Birmingham, where our Issa goes, and uh, pursue her musical worship desires. And she has managed to figure out that she does not meet, need the letters AP on anywhere on her transcript in order to make that dream come true. So as I would say, we are negotiating terms for sure about her education, right? But you know, how many of us know that, I, I, you know, there is that thing where Gwinnett County is going to hold them to a, to a certain accountability. She's going to get these core things that she needs. We know that, but there's these fundamental things that no matter which pathway my kids take, there's fundamental truths and beliefs about things that that Gwinnett County is going to make sure they get in them to be successful, right? Eric and I looked at our girls, and through this time, we've had to have a little bit of come to Jesus ourselves about did did God create them for what we want them to do or for what he wants them to do? Amen, parents? We've had to have a little come to Jesus moment, but what we ended up basically saying to them was this. We were like, look, whatever it is that you believe that God is calling you to, go out and get excellent at it. So we've said to Catherine, okay, fine, we can talk about the high school thing, but now you're going to add, she's added voice, she's added guitar. What is it that takes, what is it that it will take for you to get good at what, to be excellent at what God is calling you to? And how many of you know that somehow, though, we will get caught up in our mama and parent and dad worlds about our kids with their academics or with their other things? But how many of you know that we need to be just as diligent with our children, with ourselves, in the pursuit of Christian theology, Christian knowledge, Christian doctrines, so that we are also preparing them for what it is that God is calling them to? Pastor Jeff last week said, doctrine, what we believe, is not effective unless we mobilize it. We've got to make sure that we are getting the right core things in our beliefs. You know, sometimes we can think, when you think of the word doctrine, what do you think? You go, ouch, ugh. Give me a big thing of like ice water dipped on my head, Pastor Kim. But the truth is, is that there is some core, there's core um, understanding 
there's some understanding that the, where the Bible actually, actually shows us that if we get a clear understanding and a clear relationship of Scripture and what we know and then put that into faithful practice, that that becomes success to, and helps us to have a healthy Christian life. Amen. Today I want to talk about how that truth, how the Word of God, what we learn, and putting the emphasis on the importance of learning, yeah. how it can shape our words and also help us to create worlds. Christian doctrine, listen to this. I'm going to say it a few times today. Listen to this. Um, Christian doctrine informs both our identity, it tells us who we are, and our action, how we get to live as believers. It tells us what God has on offer for us. I'm gonna look, we're going to jump today into Ephesians 4, chapter 7, um, Ephesians chapter 4, verses 17 through 24. And I'm going to read because I'm going to have the students in here next, next, uh, next service. Thank you. I'm going to read from the message version actually today. I usually don't do this, but listen how great this sounds. It says, and so I insist, and God backs me up on this, that there will be no going along with the crowd the empty-headed, mindless crowd. They refuse for so long to deal with God that they've lost touch, not only with God, but with reality itself. Everybody say amen. They can't think straight anymore, feeling no pain. They let themselves go in sexual obsession, addicted to every sort of perversion. But that's no lie for you. Listen to here. You learned Christ. My assumption is that you have paid careful attention to him, been well instructed in the truth precisely as we have it in Jesus. Since then, we do not have this excuse of ignorance. Everything, and I do mean everything, connected with that old way of life has to go. It's rotten through and through, get rid of it, then take on an entirely new way of life, a God-fashioned life, a life renewed from the inside and working itself into your conduct as God accurately produces his character in you. I love the way this uh, version worded it because it says, you learned Christ. We are to be well instructed in truth. And isn't that a great question for each and every one of us today, right here, in this moment, are you becoming well instructed in truth? Paul is writing this to the Ephesian church. He is letting them know that then that life, when well instructed, truth in these doctrines will actually that lead us back to the one who made us, right, will actually help to bring confidence and joy. Look what he says to the Philippians in uh, chapter 4, verse 9. He says, keep putting into practice all that you learned and received from me. Everything you heard from me and saw me doing, then the peace of God will be with you. Well-learned truth down in your belly brings you confidence, joy, and it brings you peace. That's where we find rest. It's where we find peace is when we get the truth and the very understanding of who God is and who he's created us to be, and that's what brings rest to our souls. So how can we keep focusing on learning truth so that we can live this God-fashioned life? I've got three points for you today. Are you ready? Yes. Are you ready? All right, I'm being a little teachery. It feels a little back to school today, doesn't it? My teacher roots are coming out. I was a teacher, by the way, for seven years. All right, the first thing that we have to do is we have to see our place. We have to see our place. Well, Pastor Kim, what do you mean? I mean that even as we step into our schools, into our jobs, our workplaces, our play dates this week, wherever it is that God is calling you to, we have to remember that we are kingdom people. Hebrews 13 verse uh, 14 says, For this world is not our home. This world is not our home. I love that verse. The reason, one of the reasons I like the, um, the message version there, it says, Hey, you are not a Gentile. You are not part of the empty-headed, mindless crowd. But we, 
we instead, we have learned Christ. We are learning Christ, and therefore we get to live a life that is changed. We do not have to live in darkness, is what this means. We do not have to live in a state of hopeless confusion. No matter what is going on out there, as children of God, we get to identify and find our identity in Christ. Only he gets to tell us what our worlds are like. Christian doctrine, one more time, informs both our identity, who we are, it should be telling us who we are and in our action, how we get to live as believers. It tells us what God has on offer for our lives. We get to know that the very one who created us, he is our father. Sometimes we forget this. He is our father and he wants good things for his children, just like you and I wanted good things for every single one of these little darlings that just came up here and got prayed for. He wants good things for us. Parents, as you are launching your babies into the school this year, do not be fearful. Do not be fearful. It's crazy out there. But do not speak words of fear over them. Even if you had to put your kids in public school this year, do not be fearful. Do not carry fear towards your children. I remember a friend one time told me, I'll have the middle schoolers next semester, I mean next service, but I remember a friend telling me one time, I just told my middle schoolers to survive middle school, just get through these next three years. Do not tell your kids to just get through the next three years. Be the voice that is putting confidence and awesomeness all over them so that they can go in and have a great, even middle school can be great in their worlds. That is what God has for them. Every morning over the last several years, Eric and I have gotten up really, really early when Mariella was in high school, driving herself to high school, now, now, now Catherine. We've gotten up and we've prayed over our kids early. Were there mornings? <laughs> there was a morning. There was a morning when I was like literally leaning over Mariella, like I'm holding her and I'm really like leaning over her. <laughs> and one time she goes, Mom, it's good. God's got it. Just go back to bed. <laughs> I'm really like, I don't know what I said. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm here, but I'm here to speak words of life over you. But I did. Like, we wanted to be the voice over our kids. Every morning, we would get up. If you're riding through the parking lot and about to drop Catherine in her little drop-off car line, every so often, you, it doesn't matter what, she, what phone or whatever she's on, all of a sudden, she'd drop her phone and she'd hand you her hand because she was like, all right, let's go. We're about to do this. But I wanted my girls to hear, you are salt in that school. You are light in that school school. The angels are with you. They go ahead of you. They are preparing you. Your mind is bright. You've got what you need to accomplish what God has for you today. Those were the words. We wanted our kids to be, to hear our words going into public schools every day. We wanted our kids to hear our words. Parents, be vigilant with your words. Your words matter more than those school teachers' words matter. Your words matter to your kids more than their peers matter. They just don't know it yet. They may not know it. They may roll their eyes and have all the things. But sometimes Catherine would go, Mom, you're so extra. And I was like, yes, I'm extra motivated to make sure you get to what I have for you and what God has for you. Yes, I'm going to be extra. Keep, be diligent about the words that are spoken over your kids. Stay in good conversation with them. Keep speaking truth. Be the louder voice. Be the louder voice this year for your students. Be the louder voice. And guess what? We get to remind them. Keep speaking words over them that they are children of God. That Galatians 3.26 says we are children of God. We are fearfully and wonderfully made, Psalms 139, 14. I would have these verses for my kids. Be that you are blessed, coming and going, Luke 145. You don't have to be anxious. Anxiety can't control you. 1 Peter 5, 7. Be strong and courageous, Deuteronomy 31, 6. But guess what, parents? We need all of these verses for ourselves, too. We need all, whether you've got kids, whether this isn't just about kids today. 
This is why we have connect groups. This is why we do what we're doing right here. Because we, every single one of us, need to keep continuing to get the word of God, the truth of what God says in us, so that we too can continue to be formed in his likeness. Romans 12, uh, verse 2 says this. It says, don't copy the behaviors and customs of this world, but let God... Let God transform you into the new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and perfect and pleasing. We cannot conform to the behaviors and the patterns of this world. We've got to keep focusing and fine-tuning our truths to the word of God and to his doctrine. We simply need to see our place, first of all, as children of the kingdom. The second thing that we need to do is we need to set our minds. We need to, first of all, see our place. We're children of God. Secondly, we need to set our minds on the truth of his word. What doctrines, family, come on, what doctrines in your household are you standing on? Ephesians 4.21 says, since you have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from him. You know, John Wesley, one of the great reformers, wrote, wrote this. He wrote, I allow no other rule, whether faith, whether of faith or practice, than the Holy Scriptures, saying that no source of theology can operate independently of Scripture. Yes. Nothing can operate independently of Scripture. Everything that we should be doing, all of you students right here, I see you all behind on row two, listen to me. Everything that we should be using to write our truth needs to be scripture-based, guys. Every single thing that we need to be doing to write, do, you do not get to go out and write your own truth. That is up there in the list of malarkey. We need to have our truth founded in Scripture, founded in the Word of God. These reformers, um, John Wesley, it was Martin Luther, they literally adopted something called sola scriptura. There's your Latin phrase for the day. Sola scriptura, and it simply means Scripture alone. We have got to be families. We've got to be individuals. We've got to be connect group leaders. We've got to be business leaders. We've got to be whatever we are who stand on scripture alone. Why? Because these guys knew. They recognized that human beings sometimes can be deceitful and that our hearts can be tempted to bend towards other authorities that are not, that are not God-inspired. And my goodness, look at today's culture. Look at what is happening around us. We are seeing the fruit of people writing their own truths all around us, and it is disastrous. It is absolutely disastrous. I saw this thing this week. (laughs) I love this. I saw this thing this week that said, if Paul saw the church in America, we would be getting a letter. (laughs) We would absolutely be getting a letter. And where would he even begin? We'd be the longest letter, too. Like, where would he even begin? Psalms 119, 105 says, Thy word, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. We have to hold on to the word of God, the truth, the scriptures, to be the light and the lamp that we need in this world. Uh, Beth Faulkner Jones Jones said this in the book. It was titled Basic Christian Theology, I think. And she says, the solar scriptura, scripture alone principle, is a check or a safety net that is meant to keep us from falling into false thinking about God. You can even fall into false thinking about God if you're not careful. You can create your own thing. We can create, we can, people can go astray. So we have to be vigilant. We need to be sola scriptura people. When we think about the Holy Spirit, you know, last month we, um, 
Last month, we studied the Holy Spirit. That was our sermon series titled Every Day. And it was about taking the Holy Spirit and connecting him into everyday parts of our lives. When you learn scripture, when you get truths deep in your belly, you're actually giving the Holy Spirit something to work with. You're giving him something to help pull from so that he can help you in the forming of your character and the forming of your nature. Mariella, our daughter, just um, the one that's 18, the older one, she has just started memorizing more scripture. And the other day, it was just the coolest thing to see this happen in her world because she was walking through the house. I never even had one word. I only got to watch all of this. She's walking through the house, and she's having a teenager, 18-year-old moment, you know, blah, 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 mouthing off, whatever. And all of a sudden, she goes, whoop. She stops herself, and she goes, and she quotes a scripture. And she goes, I shouldn't be thinking like that. And then she walks on out of the living room. I didn't even have to get involved, folks. The Holy Spirit did it all. Like, that's what this should be about. Like, that was awesome. I didn't even have to have a mom moment. The Holy Spirit did it for me. I was like, this is awesome. That is what he does. That's what, that's what learning scripture, putting things in your mind, getting these truths, getting these teachings, that's what can happen is he, he, can, do, he can do the work for you. He wants to do all the heavy lifting anyway. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to see our place. Remember that we're children of God. We need to stand. We need to set our minds. We need to put our, anchor, put our heels in on the kingdom of God and that we are setting our minds on his word. And then the last thing that we need to do is we need to speak well. We need to speak and let our words speak well about who God is and what we are carrying. So the question for you is how are you living out what you believe? As we are going, allowing the revelation of truth to get into our worlds, when we allow the truth to get into our worlds, we need to go out and carry that to others. There are people waiting. There are people out there waiting for the message and the truth of God's word that you have the ability to carry. Where's Jeannie Mac? I saw her. Jeannie McIntyre, I saw you walk up with a friend today. There are other people out there waiting for you to do just that. That is what this is all about, is being willing to embrace someone, to bring them to the place, to bring them to the place of, of Jesus. There are tons of people out there waiting for you to grab their arm and to walk that walk and to have the right words, have a well-spoken, well-understood, confidence in your belly kind of message for them. Because they're waiting. They're waiting for that. Um, what does the Bible say? It even says that if you, when you know the truth, the truth sets you free. free. People want freedom. They need you. They need your voice. They need you. They need what we know. They need these truths. But the truth is, is we got to know them first. We got to know them first. We're going to send our kids to school and we're going to expect them to make good grades and do all the things and accomplish all the AKSs and all the things. We too need to be as vigilant in the same desire to know what we know so that we too can be held accountable. I want to read with you uh, one of the things uh, that we actually have in our, our um, we actually have it on our website, but I want to look at the Pro Apostles' Creed as I'm almost kind of closing today. It's the core how many of you were Catholic and grew up knowing it? Okay, all right, some of y'all are going to be ready to, ready to roll here in a minute. Okay, listen, you need to know the very core of what you believe. If you're a new believer, this is a great little place to start because it's this great little synopsis of exactly what the gospel and the truth is. It puts it in, it's called the Apostles' Creed because it was literally, not because the apostles just sat around and wrote this, but it was actually written because it was all of the principles of what the apostles, after having spent their time with Jesus, what they actually went out, it was the core things of what they taught. And it's a great place to begin. And it's just as great for the Protestant church as it is the Catholic church. Listen to this. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator, of heaven and earth. What a, what, a, what, a believer, what a thing that we need to hang on to. Don't get this. If you learn this in Catholic school or you learn this as a Catholic, you need to get a re-happy moment 
uh, re something something, you know what I mean, with this, with this little thing. Don't let it be this memorized whatever that you learned as a child, but you need to let this get in your belly. There's good stuff in here. Listen to this. I believe in God the Father who's the creator of heaven and earth. When you get that in your family and get that in your kids, when they go into their public school classrooms, what you just say to them is, I don't care that they're teaching you evolution. This is what I said. I don't care. Learn the stuff, take the test, make the A, but God created you. God is your creator, and he actually is the one. Do what you got to do to get through, but in your belly, girls, in your belly, you know that Jesus is, that God is your creator. That's how we live this out. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit. He was born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate. He was crucified, died, and buried. He descended into hell. And look at this. And on the third day, he rose again from the dead. And while he was in hell, man, he took care of my sin. He took care of health problems. He took care of financial problems. He took care of anxiety. He took care of everything that could possibly come against me. And, though, and then I know that on the third day, he rose from the dead. And everything on my behalf was handled. He ascended into heaven, and he's seated at the right hand of God. He's pretty much up there waiting for me and cheering me on. Let that be the story in your life for those out there. And then he's going to come one day, and he's going to judge the living and the dead, and I want to be ready. I want to be, I want to be, I want to be, I want to be ready to receive him. But get these core things in your families and in your spirit. Listen to this. This is the good stuff. I believe in the Holy Spirit. He is walking alongside of me every single day, helping me, pushing me, encouraging me. He wants to be there to empower me. I believe in the Holy Catholic Church. It just means the, the universal church at large. I believe in the church. I believe in the communion of saints. I'm getting my family into the house of God. The apostles preach this. They know God knew what he was talking about. I will make a commitment to get my family in connect groups, in community, in opportunity where we can be the communion of saints. I believe in the forgiveness of sins. I can stand on that. Yes, I'm going to mess up. Yes, my kids are going to mess up. Yes, we're going to have disappointment, but we get to keep going back time and again for the forgiveness and the covering of sin. I believe in the resurrection of the body. I know that one day, just like Jesus rose from the dead on my behalf, that one day he's going to come back and he's going to take me home with him. And that is the life that is where it will all, what it all comes down to for me. And I will have life at that time from everlasting to everlasting to everlasting, to everlasting, to everlasting, to everlasting. That is the life that I live, and I want that truth to be so deep inside of me that that is what runs me. That is what drives my family. That is what drives my life. That is what drives every single breath. That is the breath that we live on. Because as we get passionate, as we get passionate, about what this means. This, this is stuff that a lot of us have known since, since we were in this little. But sometimes we need to stir that truth back up in our bellies and remember, because sometimes it, we, it gets a little stale in there, just like any other memorized whatever can. But this stuff is life. It is life. It is life. It is who we are. It is what is on offer for us. And there are people outside of these walls who need us to know that we know that we know because they need us to be speaking well. They need us to be speaking well. They need us. They're waiting for your words. I don't even know where I am. They're waiting. They're waiting for our words. 1 Peter 3.15 says, Instead, you must worship Christ as the Lord of your life. And if someone asks you about your hope as a believer, always be ready to explain it. If you need to start with the Apostles' Creed and put that somewhere in your, in your car and start pleading that and believing that over your life every day, then just start there. Just start there. It's a great place to start. It's a fundamental, great place to start. But hey, church, 
it's fall and we're lining everything back up. We're putting our kids back on buses. We're doing all the things. <clears throat> but another thing as the mama, a mama of this house, that I just want to ask you is I want you to keep digging into that learning. Why do you need to drive off campus today and go, we as our, me and my house, we will serve the Lord and we will be in church every Sunday. When the kids' church gives you these window clings, these amazing little things that they keep creating for your kids. Our team is making these in-house. These amazing verses and things. Don't let them end up on the floorboard with your Chick-fil-A boxes. You need to be taking these and making sure these get into your children. This is the word of God. This is life. You need to see this as like gold pieces laying around on your floor. Like we need to start, we need to start getting vigilant about truth. We need to be vigilant about the house of God and the body. As the Apostles' Creed said, the communion of saints, we need to be making as we're lining things up and we're just getting everything ready for fall. Set some priorities. Just like you're making your kids like do that silent reading and do those reading logs and all those things that are coming. Make this a priority. Make this a priority. Make the word of God, make all of this a priority. We need to see our position. We are children of God. We need to set our minds firmly on truth and not allow other things besides that solar scriptura to enter our families and we need to speak well because there's somebody out there who needs to hear your voice let me pray over you this morning church God thank you Lord we thank you for your word for the truth that guides us Lord we thank you that your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path God, we ask, I pray a Holy Spirit just drawing over every person that we would be drawn to your truth and to your ways. God, lead us this year as we lead our families, as we lead in our workplaces, as we lead in our play dates, whatever it is, God. Let the truth, let your word just resonate inside of us so that we can go out and speak well, so that we can know what we know and then walk in the confidence of that as we go out and tell others about you. In Jesus' mighty name, everybody said.